The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. How we doing in uh, week three of the quarantine? I'm surprised I mean, you don't have week two for me. Uh, I, I'm surprised, surprised you don't have a bigger beard yet. This will be well. <laughs> yeah, now well, I shaved it like literally, probably the first week oh. I was home because I I uh, do have an N95 mask uh, that I've borrowed from work. Um, mm -hmm. Hope work's not listening. <laughs> no, I've had it. I've had it for a couple of years. We don't. We don't even use them for our, our field guys anymore. But uh, yeah, I was able to bring mine home. But you can't. It doesn't work if you have any kind of facial hair. So you basically have to be clean shaven every day for it to actually do anything for you and and stick to your face the way it should. Interesting. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right, man. <laughs> Right, right. All right. Well, let's get this rolling. We got a, a good show tonight. Uh, but before we jump into it, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. All right, man. What you got? Uh, I don't believe I've had this one officially on air or at least not on the show. Uh, whatever. Trogues Independent Brewing Company. Uh, the first cut IPA uh, ale brewed with mango. Nice. It is a 6.2%. Yeah. Lighter for what I'm usually drinking, I feel like, or kind of mid middle of the road, but uh it's got Comet and Simcoe hops in it. It's very uh very good, very flavorful. It's like a hazy orange color to it. So Yeah, I, I'm I not like a big it. fan of that one. I've had that one before. Um so I'm drinking I went out to the the good beer uh steep cheesesteak place by me that we were supposed to watch our games at oh, yeah. NCAA college games and got a uh, black flag brewing company just vibing it's a hazy IPA 7% um, it's definitely hazy it's got citra mosaic hops in it um, it's it's a little lighter but uh, it's it's definitely tasty man I gave it a um, I believe I gave it a three and three quarters on un on untapped so I'm uh, enjoying nice. my second one of the of the four pack here so good stuff all right, man. So this week we, um, you know, thinking about topics to discuss here and an obvious one seemed to be that, you know, we're all getting delayed with you know, the MLB season is getting delayed. And, and so, you know, we've kind of dabbled it in our preview shows once we realized things were going to get delayed, but, you know, we really kind of need to take a closer look at it. And, um, in doing some research, I was I came across an article on Pitcher List that was fantastic, and so I reached out to the writer of that, and just happened to be the owner of the site, Nick Pollock. Um, you there, man? Yeah, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Absolutely. man. Uh, thanks for thanks coming. For being here. So yeah, I like I was saying, I came across your article and you know, great information. Uh, so I figured you were a natural fit for this show that I wanted to kind of tackle this this topic and. This kind of how it impacts everybody, really. You know, hitters, pitchers, rookies, closers, starter, starting pitchers. You know, it, guys that are injured now, currently, um, just everything, right? And so, um, you know, I, I guess I should start. You know, we should start with just, and nobody knows. We know this, but just your your guess as to when the season's actually going to start and kind of roughly how many games you're projecting they're going to be at this point. Yeah. So I, so I remember writing this article. It was the day after they officially suspended the season. And I remember writing it in like a haze because I mean, I'm sure it's like that for like, like this for you guys. I'm sure for a lot of people listening, I mean, the rug was pulled from under us, right? Like yeah. we, we do this for six months from October to, I mean, yeah, even October, during the postseason, we're already doing mock drafts and everything. And then all the way through March and every single year, it's always the same feeling of 
by the middle of March, you're just tired of talking about the same people yes. and you're just waiting for the game to start again to actually talk about new things. And then when that didn't happen, we're all just kind of dumbstruck. So I wrote this in like frustration, <laughs> like just be like, oh my God, let's just get everything out of here. I just want to kind of purge the whole thought that's going through it. And so I initially, I mean, when they said they were suspending the season, I personally hadn't really taken into account and done all my research about COVID-19. And I originally wrote it with the understanding of May 1st because MLB had said two weeks delay. And we all were like, this isn't going to be done in two weeks. No. So, nope. so right. So it was like, okay, May 1st then. But I'm being generous and adding another month or so, which is so silly in retrospect. But, uh, but at the time, I wrote that article as, as May 1st. Now, I mean, I'm crossing my fingers and want to feel so lucky that it would be july 4th weekend Hmm. i mean that's i think the estimate we have to go on now because honestly if it starts in august september like they won't be a season then Mm -hmm. so if we're going to talk about fantasy in about 2020 then you have to has to come with that expectation i think of july 1st or at least mid july and then and then essentially i mean 100 games if we're lucky 110 something along those lines i because i personally don't think uh, the players union would allow uh, allow for constant double headers um, and constantly having days off or sorry, removing days off from the schedule. They fight so hard for that to ensure that they stay healthy and are able to do this. And mm-hmm. I, I think there'll be a ton of pushback with that. So that's kind of where I, I came at with all of this and the implication just going from there. Let's just make that assumption and what happens there. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, nobody knows. I think I tend to agree with you. I keep saying, you know, mid June is like the ultimate optimistic view of this at this point. July, early July is probably more reasonable, um, but that's still kind of a, almost hopeful at this point too. Um, we're gonna have to see, you know, the numbers start trending down pretty soon. I think in order to get to that point, and it's just not happening yet, uh, especially in in major markets like New York, right? Um, so. Yeah, it, it's it's tough though. I mean, and, and like you said, you, you mentioned like the double headers. Like we're we're gonna get into that too. But like that just has so many implications on oh, yeah. how you know it impacts fantasy baseball. One thing you mentioned, like if if they do do like a really condensed season in August, right? August September, right? And then just do a playoffs, even if they push the season into October, like. Is it even worth like doing your leagues that you've drafted months ago, or you know maybe you didn't draft, maybe waited until they announced the start of the season? I don't know. Like I mean, people have hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars right, sometimes. Right. These. Like, <laughs> would it just be like, guys, we're just, we're just, this is such a weird scenario. Like we're just gonna not do it this year. Well, I will yeah. say that anyone that would participate in those would still be like, baseball's being played. I'm going to in some way participate in that game. Sure. It would be so much fun. So much fun, not to mention we're so I uh, we're so starved for this. I yeah. mean, even if it starts in August, nothing else is starting in August. So they would this would be the thing that everyone's doing. I mean, I would highly recommend if you have already done your draft or something like that, just literally right now say let's just forget this, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I personally am lucky to not have drafted uh, a few leagues uh, yet because I just, I just want to know more information that we can properly plan for whenever it does happen. And I, I feel so screwed. I mean, imagine you drafted Noah Syndergaard or something like, okay, well, there <laughs> you go. You Done. I, mean, not to, <laughs> I mean, you would have been screwed anyway, but nevertheless, it's, <laughs> it kind of hurts a bit. Like we could have stopped this. Yeah. Uh, so, the the fantasy six pack staff and friends league that's been going on for like seven years we uh it's a four-man keeper league and we decided as a group to still hold the draft even though we were uncertain and the reason is being is like we've got guys across the country everybody has crazy schedules and we just didn't know like they could announce the start of the season a week before it actually starts and they would be like um we can't get everybody in the same room. So we just decided to do it and everybody's in the same boat. Right. So just, yep. de- just deal with it. <laughs> Literally. We drafted the day before Thor got hurt. No. And <laughs> the guy that has Thor, he's like, I got totally boned. <laughs> I'm like, I oh, feel bad, man. So I feel much. so bad. But like in TGFBI, uh, like I drafted, uh, I drafted Chris sale and like yeah. pick 40 almost, you know, thought it was a great steal at that point, but nope. <laughs> 
Yeah, so right. That's it is what it is. Yeah. But I mean, on the other side of it, you feel bad. Like, oh, why didn't I go after Jesus Lozardo? Or why didn't I go after Julio Urias, who now has massive value because, of course, the short season would imply their innings limit. So, right. And yeah. many other guys, which I'm sure we'll get into yeah, as well. Yeah, we will get it. So one more question. I want to get your opinion on this. So in yeah. that league, right? We had a guy who traded like half his team last year because he was his, his team was terrible f- for some reason, but he was still able to trade almost everybody, which is funny. Um, he got a ton of draft picks this year. If we have a season that's like August, September, part of October, like right, I, man, I feel bad for that guy. Like he traded, he like least like he's he just traded everything to go all in this year. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he had, like, all 27 of his picks within the first, like, 17 rounds. It's that that's many picks. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. I'm half tempted. Like, I kind of mentioned it. I was like, man, guys, if it's, like, such a crazy short season or, like, it's just not a real thing or by all means, well, like, if it just gets canceled altogether, like, do we just reset and let him get all these picks back next year? <laughs> and just like, I, I mean, I would do that. But I mean, if, if the season's canceled, if there is a season, like, who cares? Flags fly, fly forever, even in a shortened season. You know, I guess, I mean, yeah. I, I um, guess. I would, I'd feel worse for the Dodgers if they if there's a canceled season. I mean, they everyone <laughs> thought that they had this incredible trade with Mookie Betts, and they literally just don't get him for a single game. <laughs> I I will laugh if, if it does get canceled because I totally called it. Like, I don't know if it was our first show or not, but it, was, it must have been right after the Mookie trade happened, and I just said... Write it down. The Dodgers will still not make the World Series. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe. So it's like we're gonna blame, uh, all, of injury. Injury. Yeah, blame all of this on so. you. Then blame all of this on you. All right. I well, mean, let's. The, yeah, the idea that like Boston wins that trade is just so funny to me in any way. <laughs> that is pretty funny. All right. Well, let, let's uh, jump into this. Um, so. We know your focus is on pitchers. Obviously, pitcher list. But let's start with some hitters. Sure. Um, how does the re- a reduced schedule, a condensed schedule, you know, affect hitters? You know, like we all know that there's going to be you know 26, 29, whatever the number is at first, and then drop down to 26. But how does this affect hitters, you know, positively or negatively? Yeah, that's a crazy question. Like I don't know. It's it's such a you can have so many theories about this, right? Uh, one I would argue is, I mean, you guys are obviously play DFS or are familiar with it if you don't. Mm-hmm. And I, you know how on a given day, like you can have Mike Trafford that day and he goes over three and some other loser goes two home runs and that's your seat. And that's the day and that stinks. And it's just the theory of, you know, the more games you have, the more, the better players are going to have time to outpace the, the guys below. So the shorter the season to me, it personally means that hitting uh, hitters don't have enough time to really showcase that they're that much better. Mm-hmm. Um, so overall, when it comes to hitting value, I think it suppresses it a little bit, especially for the top guys and flattens out a, a little. Not to say that I would ever change my strategy, which is essentially seven straight bats and 12 teamers before getting a single pitcher. But uh, it does to me, if there's anything, because I mean, it affects everybody across the board for the most part the same, but it doesn't allow those elite performers to be as elite in this shorter format that outside of that i mean i can't really think of much um it can be like brian lahair is now amazing for an entire season or something so that's <laughs> the first half uh and it might put a bigger preference on getting the hot hand in april i'm more relative april more so even though it, that is still a very much of a, of a thing you need to be doing but outside of that i don't really i i don't know how else the the season uh, would really be that impacted yeah, I think a, an interesting point you mentioned the DFS there. I mean, and, and I don't know if anybody knows or not, but if there's a doubleheader game and you draft a Mike Trout and he's in a doubleheader, is he only counting for the first game? Is he counting for both? Is it I, like you don't you don't know how that works? I don't know, um, unless they they already have something in place for in season doubleheaders. I don't. I haven't played a lot of. DFS baseball, at least not since maybe early last year, maybe. But I think that's something that they're going to have to look at and and really just keep it in there. And then if you have a Mike Trout on a doubleheader day where he goes 
you know, five for eight and uh, has three homers or something. And it's uh, you, you won that day. Right. <laughs> so right. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be interesting to see um, and, and just how it's going to carry out with, especially if, if the league has 29 people per team to start the season. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. That's going to be nuts. Um, I would imagine with DFS, they'll, like, they'll keep it per slate. So yeah. like the 1 o'clock and the 4 o'clock, they'll just separate into two games you can play to prevent you from getting one glorious day of Trout. Yeah. But that's my third album, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> one well, glorious so, day of Trout. <laughs> you know, one other thing that I was thinking about with, with all of this condensed schedule and especially with like expanded rosters, um, you know, what about these position battles that happen? You know, like a few that come to mind, right? It's like the, the athletic second base job, the Braves third base job, the Red Sox second base slash infield job, whatever you want to call it. Those were a few that came to my mind. I'm sure there's more, but like, does it mean that both guys or all three in some cases like have more value coming in and you can take a, a, a more of a chance on them in drafts, especially in deeper leagues or just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point because if we're if we're saying that roster is going to be twenty nine, and if there are those double headers, um, which I, I'm still undecided about it because again, like I do feel the players union is just going to be like, no man, we're going to get so hurt doing that. Like we can't do it. Not to mention then like starting pitching rotations become like seven people deep because if you have so many double headers, I need days to rest and everything. Right. Um, and I just it's, it's just too much I think for them to handle. They just have fewer games in a season over the double header, but. At the same time, if they have that 20 man, 29 uh, uh, man roster, then yeah, it gives them the more flexibility to be like, all right, we're going to hold on to these guys more longer and we're going to then maybe switch them up more often and platoon it, which then gives both opportunities, like an extended spring training almost, to fight for the position for the starting spot. So it definitely does make it a little more interesting there. Um, I honestly, if if they aren't in that kind of fight, I mean, only in like the deepest leagues would I really still consider that. Right. Um, I, I would think whatever we're feeling, we were feeling in spring training before this, I think would carry over uh, to the delayed start of the season. You gotta wonder yeah. though, like you know, I I think, I think yeah, it gives both guys value, but I wonder if it just makes them just unvaluable. Yeah, together right. because yeah right. they're going to be splitting so much time because like you said it's almost like an extended spring training for both guys or all three guys mm-hmm. if you're looking at the athletics and if they're splitting every other game well then i don't want anything to do with them yeah, you know, right, unless, right. unless it's like a double header game because then hey that's cool because then i get you know i get my game in that day for whoever i have right yeah I, so I think there's going to be certain double header games where guys are just going to have to play both games and then they may take the next day off or whatever. I I hate weekly leagues as it is. And I want nothing to do with weekly leagues this year. If, if anyone is even going to do them because you just don't know. I mean, you're going to get hit so awkwardly both ways. I feel like, Um, you know, if you have a bunch of guys that are on double header games, it could help you, but, if they're only going to play one of those games, it's going to be, it's just going to not work out. I, I don't feel like so. Yeah, yeah man. I didn't even think GGF, about that. With yeah, weekly man, it's going to be rough. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Cause yeah, I'm in, I'm in uh Raz ball, Raz bowl, Raz, Raz oh, slam. slam. I mean, yeah. Raz yeah. slam. That too. That's a, Raz that's ball, though, right? We're gonna yeah. Okay so that's there. not as bad, but it's still like a weekly format to get your best score. And so it's, just kind of awkward but yeah weekly right. leagues tgfbi that's gonna mm-hmm. be brutal to set a lineup every week yeah oh man oh man yeah, I, have, I, have a, I have a couple more too and i i mean i'm, I'm a daily guy and i also I don't I like the tank i don't do like <laughs> sunday fab like i always do monday is when i start doing things again <laughs> so then i i like to train myself to do sunday fab because I, I was terrible in tgfbi last year because i really I, just forgot about it on sundays so many weeks uh, yeah so I, I didn't forget about it but i my my team was so banged up so early. Um, I fell so far behind and then I was the jerk of my division and, and picked up Jordan Alvarez when I was in like 10th place. And was like, <laughs> ha, nobody could have it but me and moved up to like seventh place. <laughs> nice. There you go. <laughs> For nothing. So whatever. <laughs> oh, um, great. 
So yeah, it was uh, it was interesting though. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, man. I, I I am not a big fan of the NFBC format. I just I, it's just not for me. I mean, I know people love it. It's just I'm not a, I'm not accustomed to it. It's just yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. So, all right, let's um let's move on to pitchers. So all oh, right, yes. <laughs> AJ, roll with yeah. This, let, let me start this one off here. Um, let's talk about the closers first. Um, I, I mean, I'm a I'm a resident closer chart guy for for the F6P site, and um, I haven't touched it since I've done it the first initial go, which was delayed as it is. But it was also like closers three days before the shutdown. Uh, what's that yeah it's also like three days before the shutdown so there's no reason to touch it right now exactly but um so your thoughts on closers do you think that this is going to help them hurt them make them more valuable less valuable well okay i first of all that was a big tease you're like we're going to talk about pitchers and we're going to do relievers um (laughs) sorry uh but no i'm I'm messing around i i mean the main thing here to me is i think it's going to separate uh the top and the bottom a bit more um it's kind of well i guess i'll say it like this like um the top is going to be higher but then at the bottom there's going to be a a, the bottom of the barrel is actually going to come up um but there's still going to be a larger gap between the first couple tiers because in a shorter season i mean i'm one of those guys that will like i think it's about 80 percent of people say i'm one of those guys that pays that doesn't pay for saves i always wait and pick one off the wire Mm -hmm. and every single year we have that closer apocalypse right the the cataclysm of events where it's just okay closers are gone but in a shortened season you have less time to get there right you you have like like imagine a month of the year this guy's a closer out of the gate well that's only a month from to lose his job or something like that right so the shorter the season the the less chances you have, the fewer chances you have to get a closer off the wire. So that, to me, makes it guys that have the job um, are elevated. Now, at the same time, if we're talking about more games in shorter amounts of time, like it, it really does depend on what where the double header thing stands. Because mm-hmm. in that case, if there's a strong setup, man, well, then you're just going to get a lot of vulture saves, essentially. You're going to have him take over a ton because we can't throw this guy like four times in, in three days or so because they've got these double headers. So you're going to see the guys that we aren't considering as good closers uh, or a possible closers actually get more saves than we expect. Uh, and then you have the ones that are committee. And that's okay, kind of, because we don't... We, I mean, you'll get more of that because you won't have one guy run away with it. They'll just keep it in a committee. So you'll actually have more opportunity to get some random saves with this random guy, like the Rays situation. I don't think they're just going to go with Nick Anderson every time. You're going to get more Diego Castillo in there. Um, you're going to get uh, another guy that I completely forgot about. But there's there's like a lot of guys in there that can get a ton of saves too. So th- that that's the way I'm viewing it. Um, it's not really changing my draft strategy a whole lot right now. I think I'm kind of waiting for the the double header confirmation or or denial at this point. Yeah, Al- Alvarado is is there as well. Yes, there um, it is. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, I think the committees are going to be very interesting because. <clears throat> There's, you know, the ones that I have highlighted on the on the chart right now in Baltimore, which was just abysmal last year as it was Tampa. You already talked about um, Seattle. I, I mean, you don't you don't really know what their deal is. And I have Washington listed, too. Um, you know, that's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, because basically the way that they ran their playoffs, you know, Doolittle got injured towards the end of the season and, and was getting beat up. So Hudson came in and really, you know, took the reins and, and he carried them more in the playoffs than Doolittle did. So again, I mean, that was kind of a quick turnaround, but I think these guys that are going to have these short leashes just to start the season as it is, are they're going to be even shorter. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see, um, you know, who gets what and for the double headers, I mean, the committees committees could be worthwhile, um, to just own multiple guys from right. that committee. Yeah. With the nationals too, you have Will Harris also with who they signed. Yeah. So someone to consider there. Yeah. I mean, that's their, their bullpen is just very, very stacked right now. So any thoughts on the closers, Joe? How you're looking yeah, at Yeah, I them? think I think the one thing that the Nick that you mentioned that I hadn't really thought about was just the fact that 
you know, I'm usually with you. Like I might go grab one kind of safe guy. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. not like, you know, I'm not going to go after hater cause he's like around five pitcher right now. It's crazy. Um, but you know, I'll go after somebody like in, in like in the fantasy six pack league, like four rounds, five rounds later, I got Kenley Jansen. I was like, okay, whatever. I'll take him. Um, right. he's safe. And so I'm like kind of good there. Right. But then later I just drafted whoever, um, you know, my last like two picks were like a, a closer. Now we're, we're a saves holds league, so it's slightly different. But regardless, that's kind of my strategy in, in all saves leagues or, or in all leagues with relievers. But the thing that you mentioned that kind of struck out to me was stuck out to me was the fact that you have less time, you know, to make things up, right? So like in rotisserie leagues, right? You know, yeah, you might be able to wait and then go grab two, three guys off the waiver wire, and then you'll make up all the ground in, in saves that way to at least be good enough, right? Yep. But you may not have that chance because we're going to get, what, yeah. a month and a half, two months of a season? You may not have that chance now, and that's something I hadn't even thought about. That's That was, like, wow. That, I don't know. That just, like, really stuck out to me for some yeah, reason. But, yeah, you got to get one now, right? You don't yeah. have a choice because it's, uh, it's, it's kind of also – I mean, I'm someone who notoriously – for hitters – I, I kind of am like the, um, I don't know. I, I just kind of cheat it. I just go, I don't care about stolen bases. Like, I'll just, I just want to have fun and get like all the super productive <clears throat> runs, RBI home run, average guys, whatever. And then like stolen bases, just kind of for an afterthought. But yeah, definitely in a roto league, sometimes I would pick up some guy halfway through the year. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm now like seventh place in steals and that's fine. <laughs> You're good enough. Yeah. Right. And that's going to be harder to do too. That's something I probably should have mentioned in, in hitters there is, yeah, stolen bases, you got to, Got to actually have a plan for that more in roto leagues. Head to head, fine. You can just not win that category. Who cares? It's one out of right. ten. Yeah, but uh, well, it's, that, that's something to consider. But that's interesting too with with hitters and like stolen bases, right? So, you know, you mentioned the fact that um, there's going to be less time for these guys to distance themselves, right? So, yep. with stolen bases, there's so few steals. Um, I mean, so what the the guy who has Trey Turner and Acuna or whoever might just crush everybody with at what now they're going to get 25 steals for the entire season between the two of them. And who knows? Right. Yeah, right so right. you're, you're 12 with whatever you've pieced, pieced together is looking pretty good at this point. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, yeah, it's, it's not going to distance. It's, it's going to be so weird, man. So, weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm on the boat where, I'm I'm still just gonna kind of go in with the same strategy with closers. I want one safe guy just to just to get a base, um, yep. so I'm not totally lost. Um, and I know it doesn't always work out. You kind of there's always that guy. Who's just a, I mean, Jansen was that guy like two years ago. Like he had a lot of saves, but he was terrible with like everything else. Right. Um, so hopefully he's. I've heard good things in the spring so far um, <laughs> about him. So I was kind of buying in on to all that, um, but. After that, I think I'm still just kind of waiting, and uh, you know, I'll pick up a few stragglers just to kind of hope, you know, sure. see what I see if I land the right guy, and 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 you know, I can hopefully grab a guy early off the waiver wire if it doesn't work out. But let's move on to starting pitching. Uh, I know you're yes, waiting for this. There we go. I got the hitting. How can so there do is that? a well. lot to uncover here with starting pitchers, which is why I saved it for last. Hmm. Um, so. Obviously, way less innings this season for everybody, right? Um, you know, this clearly makes, in my opinion, the guys who were on an innings limit so much more valuable. You know, just oh, a few yeah. names and um, that I that I had, was thinking of, and and I went through your article and, and cherry picked a few more. But you know, McCullers, Urias, Lazardo, Puck, Kopic. Um, now, of course, he's going to the minor leagues to start the year, which seemed slightly odd. But um, with a late start, I thought they would just push him out there. But, you know, all of these guys, and you can mention whoever else you want to by all means, but, like, these are all guys that shouldn't be affected as much now. You know, do their draft values just skyrocket at this point? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Like, okay, I I was – I had this whole, like, train about hipsters, Um Thanks to like one of our Twitter followers for finally coming up with this name because we needed one. But I call them hipsters, which are headache inducing pitchers who staffle the entire roster. And, <laughs> okay. and and what that means, right, is that you get this guy that you just you draft him and then you don't know. You know, they, they go into three factions, right? An innings limit guy. So like Lance McCullers before the 
played season. I was like, I don't want to touch him. 130 innings, whatever he gets, like, but when am I getting them? Right. And then I don't, you know, is he going to start this week? Is he not? It, it's crazy. It's like Dodger right. This is something I would call about yeah. Dodger staff, right? We call it, I like, just call right. it Dodgering. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Dodger Redis. <laughs> it has Dodger Redis because like he's pulled That's up cool. four innings or something. Is he starting this here. week? I don't know. <laughs> I hate this. This is the worst thing as an owner. And we don't talk about it enough because we talk about projections. Like, oh, I'm going to get this innings and I love that, you know, and great. And But like you forget what it's like to actually own these. And then there's also volatile pitchers, guys that just kind of, you know, Herman Marquez still pitches in cores. Like, I don't want to deal with that at all. Eduardo Rodriguez had like a 4-3 ERA through the first months, first four months last year with like a one three seven whip. And like, then he finally has a good month, but I'm not forgetting that. That was such a volatile, mm-hmm. what I call a cherry bomb. They're super sweet or they blow up in your face. Like, I don't want this. So I, uh, so a lot of that stuff kind of goes away though with, I mean, the volatile pitcher thing's still there, but I was just saying like, I don't want these short guys. And now I'm like, okay, now I want these guys. I'm really sorry guys for the last like six months, but <laughs> kind of now I, I want these. Um, so I, I did a whole list of anyone that I thought could have a theoretical innings limit this year. Um, and the main ones to me that I find actually shoving up my draft board because of it uh, would be Chris Paddock. Um, Chris Paddock, I, I think, uh, well, it was 140 innings last year and we got a pretty much a confirmation of like, yeah, he's not going past 180 this year. So that's a that's a sizable chunk. You know, that's a sixth of his starts versus like the other aces going like 200, 210 or something like that. Like that's actually like I need to know that in some way that some of these pitchers could become a top 10 guy if I'm drafting where Chris Paddock was. But now it's the same as those top 10 guys. So, mm-hmm. well, now, OK, he goes up the board. He's now a top 20 guy for me uh, because of that, which is I think where everyone else had him before. So I'm just like late to the party, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um but, uh, but then you have Brandon Woodruff. Like, there were concerns about him. He only pitched, he actually pitched under 130 innings last year because of his injury. And, well, now he can actually pitch a full season. And hopefully that's great too. Um, I love Jordan Montgomery, um, who's throwing 92 94 in spring training out of nowhere when he was really throwing 90 and 91 before his, his he went down with Tommy John surgery, uh, 2017 2018. So that's exciting, but he was obviously going to be limited because of Tommy John. Oh, wait, not anymore because there is no season, you know. So uh, Shohei Otani is the other massive one to me who wasn't even supposed to pitch until like mid-May for lucky. Now we're going to get it. And I think people kind of forget how like studly Shohei Otani has been or, or was before he went down. Like this is a if he gets like the same amount of innings as someone else, he's in close to, like a top 15 starter. Uh, it's just a question of when he pitches and you're talking about like double headers and padding more games and well then maybe that isn't exactly ideal because he's still going to pitch just once a week but i mean he was only going to go what 110 innings or so before and that's actually what everyone's gonna go um it's weird it's all very very weird and those are the main guys for me i mean luke weaver had some injury stuff there's julio Urias and luzardo as we've mentioned before um dylan cease also was supposed to be a little bit limited he's not going to be anymore and you talk about kopech and the minor league thing i wonder if they're just going to change that like if you announce that they're going to the minors I'm like yeah but circumstances change will allow you to expand the rosters and then there you go there's kopech or something like that yeah that's like howard they're saying this stuff about service time and it might just mean like phillies you know the phillies have vince velasquez as their number five I uh, yeah. no, all right, Spencer Howard, you want to um, you want to take that? Great, yeah. thanks. You know that might happen. So there's a lot of this stuff we got to focus on, and I uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting guys. No, no one's really getting this massive surge. I mean, I would say maybe it's Shohei Otani, a little bit of Luzardo, but uh, no one to me is just like okay, now I'm getting him in every league because of this. I mean, I I think like Puck and and McCullers get pretty large jumps in my opinion, but the rest McCuller of the guys, definitely, I'm yeah, kinda, good, I'm kind of with you, yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, Puck was a guy who I actually in the fantasy six pack league that we just drafted like the couple of Monday, Mondays ago. Um, I took him with my my last pick or something like that. I was like, ah, screw it, whatever, click. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, at that point, hey, why not? You know, he could start the season on time because it's gonna be July at that point, and I'm gonna right. be fine. And I think he's a solid pitcher. So, so I mean, with Puck specifically, um. Even before the injury, I think he was the la- like with Luzardo throwing 140 innings. They were, I think, the A's were saying okay in their head. They hadn't publicly said it, but it looked like Luzardo starts the year, and then at some point Puck would take his spot. 
And I feel like that's how they would do it with Puck in the pen and then Luzardo and Puck would switch at some point. But now, I mean, Luzardo goes the entire year and they don't really have the spot. Chris Bassett is there. Uh, he I've has heard a lot of rumors spot. that Bassett like might not get it. Like Puck could take it. I've I've heard I I would make a big wager on Bassett doing it. I mean that's I mean I I don't I've got Bassett in my dynasty league, so I'm happy oh, there with you that go. if it happens. So <laughs> I got Dude, my bases we, covered. <laughs> so that means uh, what we call a Bassett hound. That's you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, we we like our jokes at pitcher list. All right. Um, hey, I, I, mean, I like I would, it, man. I would love Puck starting. I I I would say that of the guys we've mentioned, I think it's uh, he, he has more of an outside chance than a than an inside uh, path to it. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, because it's a saves and holds league, if he's in the pen, oh great, yeah, that'll be That's fine. Really good. So <laughs> it's fine with me. Um, he'll just rack up a ton of strikeouts being like the long relief guy or something and, and give me a bunch of holds. Yeah, I'll be good. So it'll be fine. So yeah, we were going to talk about Otani next, but you already kind of covered it right there. So, you know, his guy, his, his value sky. No, yeah. it's fine, man. Perfect. You know, it's read my mind. So that's fine. Cause he was definitely like, I thought he was kind of an outlier in all of this. Like he wasn't really injured, but like he's coming off an injury and right. they already, they kind of like delayed his pitching start for the year, but now they don't have to delay it. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So we we just went through all these guys that, you know, we thought were going to have innings limits. Now, what about the pitchers that were going to be the ones either, you know, they were going to hold some value because of these pitchers on the innings limits? Um, I mean, now they don't really seem to have as much value. So what are your thoughts on these guys? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean... So I had a couple listed here, like Zach Greinke, Jose Barrios, Madison Bumgarner, Aaron Nola, as guys like you would get. Not You don't expect them to be your top 10, top 15 guys just because they don't have the same strikeout rates. But they're going to be the stable rocks that you need. And yeah, I do find myself like going a little bit lower on them because of this, right? They were all in the same playing field. Now, their IPS, like innings per start, should still be higher than some of these young, young guns, right? I do expect Zach Greinke to go into the sixth and farther more often than say Luzardo. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it, it doesn't, it's the same thing kind of with the hitters is that, yeah, you, it's crunches it down a lot more. Uh, so yeah, it does lower their value. You're totally right. I mean, I, I think say for Madison Bumgarner, I don't think I've drafted Granky Barrios or Nolan, any league just because I liked other guys instead, but yeah, it does. I don't know. You can make an argument that, Walker Bueller actually loses some of his value because he's not, you know, those innings are going to be met all across the board now. At the same time, you can also say, well, yeah, but shorter season, but I want the better probability guy to succeed. And that would be Walker Bueller. So I, I'm not, I don't know exactly where I stand at the moment. I just kind of kept it the same. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting discussion to be had. Well, so what about also like, so we mentioned Puck, right? Who was going to hold more value maybe later in the season because the guy he was going to replace had an innings limit, right? But there's also these pitchers that are like the fourth, fifth guys, fifth, sixth guys, right, who who hold a little bit of value, although it, albeit like low value, um, all year just because the guy, like, there might be like a guy come in and, and pitch like 100 innings and then he's gone or like 60 innings and then he's gone. But that other guy just always is kind of around. So he might be like yeah. a waiver wire guy. But like, what do we do with those guys now that they may not get their chance anymore? They might just be kicked out the door. We just streamed them. That's all we do. We yeah. just, you know, like Ross Stripling. Like some people have been drafting Ross Stripling. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to touch Ross Stripling. I don't know. Like Dustin May is another one. Like these guys, I mean, I understand it's Dodgeritis and stuff, and they will get the chance, <laughs> but there's no time for us to wait for them. So when they do get it, okay, do I have it the roster spot? No, sorry. And, you know, it's not. Uh, they're not like like your Spencer Howard or your Michael Kopech that would make this massive impact the second they do it, and you know that you can ride with them after. So uh, yeah, you just kind of let them go. They take more chances out of the for guys that are going out of the gate. And don't worry about the ones that would be any sort of stash. There's no time to stash. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, those those uh those April hot hitters are going to be the July hot hitters and pitchers. Yeah. And they're going to be the that first waiver. Those first two waiver like periods are going to be just fire, well, dude. Everybody's I mean, going to go nuts. 
Yeah, well, the crazy thing to me is I'll finally figure out if Corey Kluber truly is just bad in April or if it's a start thing, right? I was wondering. I actually was thinking that. Um, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, well, we're not going to play in April. Maybe he'll be good. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Are you just talking about Kluber? Because yes. I was literally just writing cold start. So you drafting these guys. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> Boom. Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So speaking of Kluber, yes. uh, you may have heard that he is very slow in April. Um, yeah, he uh, he burned me last year, so I'm a little a little annoyed. The guy that we were talking about with all the trades, I didn't give up a ton, but I got. I'm also going to always him remind seven. every guest we have that you started him in April like three years ago, every single game, and then that first game in May, you were like. Psh! No, at like this guy, eight, <laughs> eight, 19 innings, strikeouts, maybe. like 16 oh, strikeout game or whatever. It was nasty. And he was playing me and I made him, I made sure he heard about it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember that game just, and I actually just watched it like two, uh, eight, two weeks ago. It was so like filthy. So mad. It was That's fantastic. So yeah, it, it was, it's crazy. But the thing is he didn't have a 30% plus strikeout rate, despite that 18 strikeout game. I was like, oh man, Kluber. Like ah, you weren't consistent still, but all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, so so last year I I traded I think a seventh rounder. I got him, who was a first round value. I wasn't keeping, and then I got Matt Olson as like a seventeenth rounder, and I got a twenty seventh pick or something. I don't remember. Nice. It was it was uh unusable for me because he burned me yet again like that April so many moons ago that uh, <laughs> Joe was just talking about. So. Aside from him, I mean, there's obviously other pitchers that that have cold starts. Now that we have basically half a spring training, and we're going to have spring training 2.0 uh, before the season starts, or everything Hopefully. that I've read has talked about that potential. Um, I mean, is that going to hurt these guys more? Are are they going to somehow? be ready because their bodies realize hey it's nice and hot out we can pitch now yeah i don't know yeah that's nuts i no idea i mean my best guess is that we're going to see a lot of guys that need more time to ramp up and we are going to see a larger effect of the early this season being slow for pitchers uh relative to previous seasons um i i I feel that a lot of them are taking it safe but at the same time you have guys still throwing bullpens and everything um, and it, it's weird. Uh, I, I'm not going to put stock into it in my fantasy teams, uh, expecting this to be a slow start or something. I, we would be able to say like lowered velocities and stuff, especially relative to spring. And then we can probably get reporters say, are you okay? So again, man, I just need time to ramp up. Okay, great. We got the quote we need. We move on mm-hmm. and we're going to be freaking out a lot, a lot. Just be ready for that. And we won't know. Um, there certainly will be times when it actually will be an injury that's hidden. Uh, some guys are afraid um, that I, I've talked to that there are going to be these injuries because you're mm-hmm. starting, stopping, starting. Um, I've thought but that I, too. But it's like I can't, I can't draft any differently because of that. Like I don't know how that's going to be. Uh, we're all in this together, and we're all be like running around that first week and trying to make heads and tails of it, heads or tails of it. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be wild. I will say this: I had Corey Kluber at 17, actually, really at 16. Uh, in the preseason, I love me Corey Kluber. I think he's like one of the best values you can get uh, in drafts right now. So, just for the record, AJ wants to hear none of that. I love him. <laughs> I love. I mean, him. I I I like him still somehow after all of this. I, I guess it's You're just smart, AJ. that it's it's just that like <laughs> that last bag of of meth from tiger king and, and i'm his toothless lover Man, that i I've, just okay. i just need to get it Come i've on. never seen it i haven't seen it yet uh, everyone just keeps don't telling don't me I need to see don't it. it's, it's i haven't not, i haven't no it, it sucks I, i've gotten through <laughs> almost all of it i think i'm about there's six episodes i'm i'm like part way through five and then i've just i crashed out or something i don't know <laughs> We binged it a couple Saturdays ago. It was the meth. Um, my my wife yeah, wanted exactly. to watch it, and I was like, "Really, really? Okay, well, so you you do like the Bachelor and the Bachelorette, so okay, I understand why you like this." So is it like the opposite of the Bachelor and the Bachelorette? Like the actual? It's opposite. Well, at least this is of? like a true story, but 
Uh-huh. So it, I will say this. Wait, The Bachelor's not true? What? It's reality TV. Isn't that first part In real? In the name, Joe. Real? Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. It feel- Real thank you <clears throat> TV? Yeah, I don't know. The Bachelor seems super, super, super fake to me. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, I will say this about it. It it kept my attention, but it was something that I could have not watched and been perfectly fine not ever watching. So, uh, it understood. You it does. To, uh, you, you, you have to find the. Oh, actually, I'll I'll send it to you because I have it. My my wife sent it to me. She she's been like going back and forth with friends of hers of just random Tiger. King oh, I I saw I saw the one the the OJ she posted on Facebook. No, oh, the OJ no, not tweet, that one. Ta- him talking about it. No. It, his his Twitter handle is phenomenal. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it, every time there's something he can bring up that involves somebody killing somebody else, <laughs> he's seen. just like, I know, I know they did it. They totally oh, killed this God. person, and it's like you would know. I mean, <laughs> like <laughs> maybe you should stop talking. Expert on killing, uh, you yeah, know, the, short of a, a serial killer. I mean. Yeah, it, it's you got to find that one, but it's it's pretty. Funny. Yeah, it, so it's anyway. definitely it definitely makes your jaw drop a couple of times. You're like, no, this is this is not this is not real. Like this didn't actually happen, and no, no, it definitely did. Which is yeah. my mind boggling to me. The mo- the most mind boggling part of the whole thing is like all this stuff is happening, yet there are cameras rolling the whole time. Like, right. what did you think care. was gonna happen? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, well. well I appreciate the, the the spoiler free review you guys have just given me. Um, I, I'll I'll report. I'll report back. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm sure you will be like everybody else and somehow tweet about it because that's what happens. You just oh, you have no. to. <laughs> All right. I just so, want LeBron and 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 Woods to come out with their own version of it. LeBron Tiger Woods. King. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to move oh, past it. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> All right, we will move yep. on. Yep. All, All right. right. <laughs> so cold starts um, in April. How how are these guys going to be affected? <laughs> well, I mean, by the way, about Kluber, so, I just feel so bad because all you got was the bad, and then all of a sudden, like the forearm to it, you know, the the forearm was fractured. Like you didn't even get a chance to I get know. normal Kluber or like actual great Kluber, and it just no. yeah, I feel so bad. Yeah. So, uh. all right. So. We've talked about double headers a bunch with the closers a little bit already and a lot with the hitters. We haven't really touched on it with the starting pitching yet. And I just kind of want to get your opinion on, you know, what the effect this will have on starting pitching. Like teams are clearly going to have to carry more starting pitchers and, and the expanded rosters are going to help that. Um, I think in your normal head to head weekly leagues, right? It's not going to make that much of a difference, right? Because, there's still you're still getting your starts right, but I mean, just what does this do? I mean, because yeah, they're still going to be pitching maybe every five to six games or, or days, but the pitchers won't be starting every five to six actual games. So, is this condensed schedule with double headers even more like reducing the innings even more so than we're even well, thinking about? Well, again, I mean. I'm. I don't know how safe an assumption it is to suggest that we're getting these double headers. Um, and if that does happen, then I rescind a lot of the comments I just had about like AJ Puck not starting because he's not the number five. Then well, then yeah, then he would start a game or two, right? Yeah. Um, that's really where the value changes in my mind. Um, there's those six, seven stars like the Dodgeritis guys, Dustin May. Okay, welcome, buddy. Um, there's some value there, but yep. uh, but I mean, yeah, then you might even see Nate Pearson. Because then I believe that Trent Thornton has the number five spot in in uh, Toronto, but he would be the six probably, and they would call him up and they would have an impact there. Um, I don't know if I'm ready to make that assumption yet. Uh, I'm not going to say so because again, I really do feel that the players' union is going to be like, guys, we can't do this. We're just going to be too hurt to do that. So that would, you know, having those constant double headers is just, I think, not going to really happen. Um, they've talked about like six to eight a month. Yeah, it's been like all these. It's just discussions. I mean, yeah. really, nothing has been established with the season so far. Um, and that's one thing that they're tossing around. But uh, that that means I don't know. 
Um, at least we know that there, you know, it's a possibility. Right. But, and uh, this is all hypothetical uh, talk, really, right, anyway. Exactly. Like, we like, just don't know, do, but it's though? fun like, to... What else, can we, you know, what else can we do, right? <laughs> Um, I need so a, I need a I, chance to talk to sports for an hour a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's funny because like a lot of it. I mean, I'm I'm starting to feel um, like what I'm starting to do with it with the pitchers cast. Like, you know what, guys, let's like, I don't know. I'm gonna. I think we're just gonna start doing like baseball things. You know, it's like I, I can't. There's just so much we can talk about with fantasy. You know, I uh, and so yeah, being thrown this bone of like the double header. Like, cool, we have something to talk about here. And yeah, I would. Okay, so if it is that double header then you're totally right about that uh, about more opportunity with it with different pitchers and it's just kind of a much more of a free for all for streaming cuz i cannot even imagine like i don't know you have what uh 45 uh different well sorry 30 games to to choose from with streamers in a day instead of the 15 max that we've had oh before my gosh. right be like crazy. that's 30 different i do well, that's assuming they all happen on the same day yeah but i guess they right. would that's well, only no, I'm just fair saying, like, that they have to do it that way, right? Well, no, I mean, you weird. could do it that way where everyone just has a doubleheader today or something like that. Like but, every Wednesday is a doubleheader day. Right. But yeah. like, but what would be crazy to me is I do the SP roundup. <sighs> That's just like the thing that I do during the year. I write about Good every luck. single start of every pitcher <laughs> every day of the regular season. I've read those. If have, have fun. Do, if I have to do 60 starters or whatever. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's gonna. That's yeah, gonna we something. do like the you know we do one of those like starting pitcher like weekly uh, reports for the for the upcoming week, right? And like the hitting report, same thing. Those are gonna be like impossible to do this year. <laughs> you just don't know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it's. I'm, I will figure it out. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I've got a bit of a follow my head up hurt. for this then. <laughs> so if the the pitchers. Obviously, creatures of habit used to this five to six days. If they're going to be pitching these double headers, do you think that they will go their typical maybe, you know, seven, eight innings for some of the studs or, you know, anywhere between six to eight? Or are they going to trim it down for these guys and make them only go five to six, even though they're still going to be pitching on that? five days you know rest but it's a shortened season and they want to try to preserve these guys even for a shorter season um i would say i would say honestly i don't want to expect them to pull them back um i would like keep in mind also the bullpen needs to not get taxed yeah so if they're if, if i'm pitching like if i pitch 80 pitches like it doesn't really matter based on like 100 you know mm-hmm. you've already geared up and gone for it uh at that point um so i i wouldn't be i'd be very surprised if we start seeing guys go lower i've heard a lot of i have read a lot where that's kind of the prediction where people are going to get pulled back but i agree with you nick like i don't understand why they would like let them go at this point <laughs> they're yeah, gonna have I, so many I, less innings as it is this year let them right. go yeah, I'd feel it'd be more on the other games. side of anything, right? Maybe we might get more complete games for once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because oh, you can't man, use the crazy. closers every day. Like you can't use yeah. them as much. So maybe they'll just let you know, um, Degrom and these guys go the full nine and just let them have it. Right, I'd, that'd be I'd great. Love it. Uh, please, please. <laughs> I give know, right? Better baseball, right? That, at least can you give us that? Just I better know, it'd be so much again. better. It'd be so much fun. <laughs> All right, so last question on this topic, and then I have my next question. So what about these teams who have the starter reliever that comes out and pitches an inning? I mean, we're not going to see any of that this year, are we? Uh, A a bullpen day? We're totally going to see false starter of like like the Rays and stuff. Like that's not going away. Yeah, they just do Um, (laughs) But I mean, I don't know if a bullpen day, if we can get by with that now. Like I remember actually at the beginning, before this all happened, we were thinking that the Yankees maybe would do that a bit as we waited. They waited for Paxton or waited for Jordan Montgomery to get up to speed again. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, yeah, you're, that makes a good point. That's a, you made a great point about just if there are more games condensed, you can't really burn the bullpen like that. And you'll figure out some way to get more innings with someone else. 
Yeah. So we might not see the full on bullpen day as often. I mean, maybe you'll see it for like terrible teams, but I, uh, but else. you won't see it. I don't, I, you will see a lot of the openers though. All right. So that brings me to my next question then. Um, not on double headers, I promise. Uh, the prospects. So I'm calling it the call ups or the leave downs. I mean, we've oh, got nice. guys like, Mackenzie Gore, Casey Mize, Nate Pearson, Forrest Whiteley. You know, you mentioned um, Spencer Howard, but I'm thinking of the the other Phillies pitcher who's no longer Phillies pitcher, Sixto Sanchez. Yep. I um, mean, you got Kyle Wright, who was starting games last year. I mean, some of these guys I feel like could come up and just stay up, and and, and especially if there's no. Uh, service time you know regulations for this year or whatever um i mean what do you think about these guys are are you gonna see them up more and earlier or are they just gonna some of them might just get screwed and have to stay down yeah um again it really does depend on how often like if we're expanding to six or not um with rotations right if they need to do that now it's kind of funny you bring up gore uh this is a lot of talk i've heard about like hey maybe the potters will push gore they push the paddock um in a normal season i would never expect that because the padres have their five firm like zach davies is there i think a lot of people forget that i certainly do all the time (laughs) Uh, casey uh lamette uh paddock and um garrett richards so i don't see where gore fits into that that's not to mention i actually watched uh the 2019 futures game we do like a classic game uh, watch party on our discord every day and just like to get through because there needs to be baseball. And uh, we had the 2019 Futures game on Sunday. And so I watched that. Like, I don't watch prospects often because I always say, you know what, I'm not going to watch them until they come to the bigs. Mackenzie Gore, honestly, I liked D.L. Hall, the Orioles guy, more than Mackenzie Gore. Hmm. And like the one inning I saw, super small sample, but I wasn't like blown away. I thought I would be just ecstatic about Mackenzie Gore. And he was just, he was good. I mean, he'll be a... I don't know. He'll be fine when he comes up, but he's not going to like be a top 15 guy or something like that, or a top 20. That's not how I feel uh, about Mackenzie Gore. So that name is specifically not so much. Sixto Sanchez, I think is much better. Um, the Marlins are weird. Like you can't, I don't never know what to do. Like I've tried to plan out what the Marlins would do. I don't know. They, they'll be like one day, but yeah, sure. Whatever kid, just come on up. I mean, back with like Jose <laughs> Fernandez, like, I, I mean, I loved, loved Jose Fernandez. And they called him up, like, at 19. And they just didn't care. You know, they were like, all right, yeah, sure, whatever. And it was like, what, what are you doing? Uh, so, Sixto, it's it's kind of weird. And, again, the Soren scene stuff, they might, yeah, they might bring him up because it, I don't know when they think their window is, but they might want Sixto to be ready for that. Um, So, he's someone that's interesting with me. Spencer Howard, as I mentioned before. Uh, Nate Pearson as well. I'm definitely have my eye on. You said Kyle Wright in there. I'm out on him just in general. We saw his command last year. Yeah. And while his slider fastball can be electric, uh, there is definitely something. Yeah, you know, he hasn't made that tweak yet. And until I see that tweak in the majors, where he's actually consistent with his mechanic going straight down towards the plate and executing, uh, I'm not going to sign up for that. Um, but I mean, I, I could go through a lot of them like that, but. I don't really, I mean, save for the ones I've already mentioned, I don't really think there's someone that I'm thinking, okay, because of this, I'm getting that guy. And I think that he's going to make a huge impact. All right. Joe, any thoughts on it, prospects? So with the one question I had with you, and I, maybe I'm not understanding it correctly, is, you know, I read the report that came out that they're not, you know, they they're, they're going to count this year as a full service year no matter how many days are played. But does that mean there's still like the super 2 deadline? And so yeah, they could right. just pull I, these guys back. Don't, I, I, don't, I, don't. I mean, I I could be wrong in that they have announced this stuff and I'm just not aware. I I feel that we're not going to know the answers to this until we actually get a season starting. Okay. Um about and then that will dictate how players are managed. It's all like just it's still a lot of yeah because for some reason when i first read that i was thinking like oh man these prospects are fair game like they're everybody's gonna get like called up now because why not like they they're gonna lose their year anyway um but then money there's money (laughs) right Right. but now it's yeah but now that you 
you said that like I, I, it's, I just was thinking like man maybe there is still going to be like a super two deadline and i'm just not aware right. of it so 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 this is something by the way i, I just want to clarify for anyone listening uh because it took me ages to know the main difference here um they're saying you know it, there comes to a year of being allocated for service time for how long you actually control them and then there's the super two for when you start actually paying arbitration for them so that year of arbitration it's like six hundred thousand dollars you make every year and then all of a sudden you have to pay them based on their value to the team which is a lot more money we're yeah. talking like millions and millions so uh so they want to as long as they can hold them down until like july uh, because then they don't have to pay the arbitration year for another year which is huge uh, so i mean there's some teams right. that don't care but so if we're talking like wait. i think i read about it in your article it was like what 40 percent of the year Oh, and that's like yeah, that. I, I, yeah, I updated it. it like two days ago. It used to yeah. be like 15%, but now I'm like, I'm gonna say 40%. Um, but then so super two, then theoretically, like okay, let's say we start in July, and I would I'm very much assuming they're playing the regular season through October and then neutral locations for playoffs. Um, so then I so I guess that would mean like middle August oh, or, or so, brutal. and then we would wait for these guys. Oh, man. Um, that's brutal. We so had a couple like six weeks into the season. We had a guy who actually really, drafted yeah. a bunch of these like prospecty type of guys who thinking I think that they weren't going to have to go through this. <laughs> right. Got, well, well, right. Screwed. But then, but nobody but then knows. If, if we're treating them like Vlad, though, if we're treating them like Chris Bryant, then okay, then that doesn't matter because they weren't they were giving up the arbitration year before, and that's fine because that's off the table. You know, like the, the the service time for the year. If we treat them like that as like someone that would be in August or so an April call up, then like they'll still do that out of the gate. Yeah, man. Uh there's so many, so many variables. All right, last topic here. And we've asked this question to everybody that's come on the show for the last like two months, but this this is changing every day. So I keep right. asking the question. Cool. These injured players that are currently injured that we're going to start the year on the IL, right? Um, I say IL, I'm football mode. Whatever it is, it's, it's IL. You're right. Is it IL? IL? Oh my god, I don't know. Yeah. What does football call it now? Didn't they change it? Injured list from disabled list. Okay. So my phrase DLH, disabled list hangover, now is obsolete, which is really annoying because I like that. <laughs> so yeah, so all these guys, right? So just a large list of guys right you got Stanton you got Judge we got Clevenger Carrasco Verlander Scherzer um you know Paxton uh Hanniger Canning yeah. even right like just tons tons and tons of guys um are you just putting them back to where they would would have been assuming there was no injury at this point well certain guys yes other guys no um like canning i'm like it's angel syndrome of of getting essentially a ucl injury or you know tommy john suggestive and not doing it and mm -hmm. then delaying it and then eventually getting it um i'm worried about canning i'm worried a little bit about blake snell because uh there was no surgery or anything um and it was like a cortisone shot and stuff I'm like that just doesn't so seem right so i heard so just to backtrack on that on yeah, yeah. a little bit, I was listening to ESPN radio one time and they have Stefania Bell on and, mm -hmm. or maybe it was Sirius XM radio. And she mentioned, she was, she pointed out the fact that the injection was on the, the other side, not where the elbow is on the other side. Well, it was like the outside or the inside, whichever side is like, so the injection or the injury is on the opposite side where like, right. You have to yep. worry about the UCL. So like, that's the right, big right. thing. But so I'm not, you, but the thing is, I'm not saying like, I don't, I'm not worried about this. So the UCL It's just, if you get a cortisone shot for it, that's just, it's, it's a temporary measure. Sure. And I, I would still put uh, some stock in like, okay, this isn't something that's just going to do this one shot and he's never going to be affected by that again. Probably um, not. To, uh, I agree with you. Right. So that to me is like, okay, I'm putting down Spike Snell a little bit still relatively. Um, uh, let's see, like Judge and Stanton, I think I'm okay with, but at the same time, I think just as a whole, we all need to be realizing that none of them can be, neither of them can be a second round value now. I'm still terrified because, of Stanton. Because they're just, they're just just too big. Their bodies can't handle this, and that's just how they are. So I think that the latest injuries to both of them made us both be like, all of us be like, okay, all right, let's just, we were being a little silly as a community. We all get it now. We've learned. We've you know, we've rectified our mistakes moving forward, right? 
Uh, so, I mean, it's always case by case. With Clevenger, Clevenger's weird because if, like, in normal C, like, he wouldn't have rushed back. He would, he rushed back from that injury. I mean, he was quickly, way too soon pitching and, like, oh, you know, beat his timeline, all that kind of stuff. And um, I've talked to a couple injury uh, injury experts about it, and they're all terrified because he should not be pitching on it. It's just too soon for his full body to heal, even if they thinks it's great and stuff like it's still too early. So I wish that he just took his time because of this massive delay. He didn't have to rush back, but it does make me slightly concerned still about Clevenger that something hmm. can balk in that knee uh, in the, in the season ahead. Um, a couple other guys. I mean, I've heard some things about Paxton about, he said, they said that he'd be 90% healthy and they'll get through it. And there is some concern there, but I have elevated Paxton a ton anyway. Just because, I mean, if he's pitching, I mean, he's still going to be very productive when he does. Yeah, you have so, to. Yeah, so that, I mean, I'm sure there are others, but those are the ones that have really stuck out of my mind. Makes sense, makes sense. All right. Uh, so that's all I've got, AJ. You got anything else for him? Oh, I think you're on mute. Did we, did we lose you, AJ? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what happens. It's not an amateur <laughs> podcast if somebody doesn't mute themselves. <laughs> My boy like came up to like adjust, and I must have just pr- pressed the button by accident. Uh, you got to redo it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm uh, I- I'm good, man. Um, yeah, I just uh, I-, I I I will uh, let you know that I I did uh, draft Ross Stripling. Um, <laughs> granted, it was it was the twenty fourth round. So all right, yeah, sure. You, we can't I'm, go. Wrong I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I got some praise at the time, but we you know didn't realize it was going to still be continually unknown at this point. But was this when he was an angel by any chance? Because then he would have been no great value. No, <laughs> that would have been that would have been good. Um, well, it might have been four beers deep at that point, but it's cool. Y- y- <laughs> uh, you might have been six. Who knows? I I was probably yeah. I was probably at least four on my way down to the end of four because <laughs> we were I don't know what we were bullshitting for like another hour after the draft oh at least. You know, I talked to like two a.m. that night. I was yeah, crazy. I, don't know. I was stupid. I was hammered when I went to bed. Day. But <laughs> yeah, good work. Um, we are the fancy six pack. <laughs> yeah, I had That's the true, fancy yeah. six pack that night. <laughs> uh and and the fantasy hangover the next morning so uh but yeah i I definitely have a a lot of i i did it last year because i had i I was the guy that went all in and traded everything away had no early picks and just got all of these players back still didn't win a championship so whatever uh but I was able to succeed because of my ratios and just going all in on relief pitchers. I kind of did the same thing this year, and I, I already had Garrett Cole as a keeper, as a what a fifth rounder. So I just let it ride. And the next pitcher I took was my Angels pitcher, Dylan Bundy. So I mean, it was a little early Church for him, maybe at the thirteenth, but I'm okay with it. So. It'll be interesting to see how how this team pans out in a shortened season, um, especially yeah. with all the potential yeah, good luck with Bundy. Uh, it definitely helps him a little bit because yeah. I like Bundy in the sense that he has a really good slider and changeup, and it's getting him away from Baltimore, and hopefully he'll be fixed in some way. Yeah, I it's kind it's of funny. I just I, I, <laughs> I just did the trivia thing with the uh, the uh, the Turn Two podcast and Matt Williams, and uh, I, one of my trivia questions was who had the highest. Uh, home run per nine in all the decade during the 2018 season. That was Dylan Bundy. Yeah, um, I believe it. But I, but I mean, the thing is, I was kind of in on him. I was, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm okay drafting him at the end of my drafts and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, oh no, he might get the Astros to the first three matchups that he would get to start the regular oh. season. But now, who knows, right? Like, maybe that's well, okay now because now you won't be definitely trying to avoid those and then having this roster spot where you're going to get one just keep telling AJ he's going to have not. him. You can trade him to me for nothing. So No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, count him in the 13th round. He's not trading you. I'm yeah. So, <laughs> so mad he took him because, of course, I talk about him on this podcast, so he like snaked him from me. 
well like I, that's rounded. exactly why i took him and then you're you trying did. to like oh well i, was, I wasn't was gonna get him uh, i'm like yeah <laughs> maybe not in the 13th but i know no. he was on your queue he definitely was so <laughs> you had to take the thought shot fireball a, that time buddy thought a, thought a couple rounds a couple rounds uh, to go before i had to worry about it but all right nick I, I mean, um i probably would have let him sit but i had i had no uh i needed starting pitching at that point sure all right, Nick. Well, thanks for coming on, man. It was a great talk. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, before you go, though, just let me know what you guys got going on over at uh, Pitcher List and you know where they can find you elsewhere. Cool. Um, yeah, guys. Also, this was this was a great time. Thanks a lot for bringing me on, really. Uh, but yeah, um, PitcherList.com. We're doing a ton of stuff, a lot of uh, fun drafts. We're doing like a PVL draft. We're doing a co-managers draft with like, staff members and our supporters but uh we have this incredible thing called pl plus people can sign up and join our discord Mm -hmm. where we're doing these classic games of the day we just did family feud um (laughs) which was amazing like i mean we have this 300 person plus community and it's the perfect place to be during this quarantine because we're all getting through it together so I, i can't emphasize enough uh to join that and get pl plus you also get a cool fantasy guide for free so i definitely definitely consider joining that Sounds good, man. Uh, yeah, and if you guys don't already, follow me on Twitter at PitcherList. Uh, not that he needs any more followers, but uh, <laughs> send a few over our way, man. Um, but no, I don't know how good. I have it. I still don't understand <laughs> it whatsoever. Um, but really, thank oh, you guys so much for having me on. So. This was absolutely good hanging with you both. Definitely. And, uh, we appreciate it. And enjoy Dylan Bundy. I'm rooting for him, all right? <laughs> I will. I will. Let, let me know when. Uh, let me know when one glorious day of trout drops. Uh, oh yeah, you know, it's 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 getting there. It's getting there. Every single day, you gotta you gotta work harder towards it, right? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, man. All right, AJ. Care, guys. All right, thanks, um, Nick. AJ. So that's all I've got for the show. Uh, we'll just end it there. I think it was a good one. I had fun Works for me. All right. All right. Peace. Cheers. Stay safe. Drink beer.